Many would argue that Europa Universalis is rather Eurocentric, and I tend to agree, but what if the game was entirely Eurocentric? Well, through the power of modding, I deleted all nations outside of what EU4 considers Europe, and today we're going to observe and see what happens. Any nation in the world that is not a colonial country has at least one port or a province that borders an empty province. For example, AQ is adjacent to this province, which is empty. They will receive free monies to colonists, colonial range, as well as colonial growth. We want to have a race to see who can colonize the most and at what date the world is fully colonized. Before we unpause i want you guys to go down to the comments and tell me who do you think will have the most provinces in the world once they're all colonized and looking at these numbers what date do you think that they will be done colonizing i did also tweak the numbers so people who meet the requirements for the trigger modifier are also more likely to take exploration i've also made it so every nation has discovered every sea tile and province in the world that way nobody gets any unfair advantages in that regard obviously some nations are going to have bonuses like portugal is just primed to take the new world in africa nations like the great horde no guy uzbek have just limitless opportunities over this way. The main thing I'm curious about is who's going to get Northern Africa, because basically everybody over here has range on the entirety of this coast. So I'm really curious to see who gets what. Anyways, let's unpause and see how it goes. Right off the bat, you've got Aragon over here, Granada over here, Genoa and Tunis. Portugal is getting over here in Tunis as well. Luca, beautiful color. An absolute mess over here. Austria, Urbino. Albania is over here as well. The Knights, Ragusa. The Ottomans are going off over here, right next to Cyprus. And then you'll see these guys are gonna slowly start colonizing out from where they start as well. Just about two years in, and you can see that uh, Northern Africa is an absolute mess. Whoever gets into these choke points here early on is gonna be getting a nice edge because then they'll be able to get the entirety of the interior here. And you see Provence and Portugal are over here where France is in the New World. So is Brittany, Naples, and then Castile and Florence are splitting the Caribbean. Don't forget about Aragon. Norway has made their way over here. Things that you love to see. Cypriot, Mashriq, that's pretty good. Ottomans and Venice are making a mad dash over here, and I assume many of them are going to jump over into India and China ASAP. Meanwhile, seven years in, Portugal has got the Cape. South America looks like it's going to get split mostly between Brittany, Naples, and France. Mexico is heavily going for Aragon and Genoa so far, and it looks like Florence is going to be starting up the 13 colonies. Vinland has formed. Siena is making the push into Central Africa, and the Ottomans are pushing into India now. I should also note that any provinces that had forts were also deleted, so the AI is going to have to either build them or let their massive countries get sieged down. You can see Perm, Uzbek, Nogai, and Great Horde just sprinting. <laughs> These guys ate Georgia, and it looks like they actually have been cut off. So Caraman and Cyprus are uh, pushing along this coast here. Venice is making their way into Hormuz. Portugal has made it into the Delta. Provincial Congo, not to be confused with Papal Congo. But here we go. We have a new Granada looking to form as well. Vinland is doing okay. Looks like they're going to have free reign in Canada. Colonial nations in South America are looking pretty neat. North America, they're pretty messy. But uh, I reckon they're going to sort that out amongst themselves. Ragus and Egypt pushing all the way down into Ethiopia here. And Portugal is setting up shop in China with the Ottomans over here as well. It's pretty cool because they're definitely focusing on the provinces that have a lot of trade value, which makes sense entirely. Yep, as I said, looks like we've got some uh, new world wars going on already. Granada has actually been exiled into the Caribbean. So this is not a colony, this is their own land. And they have attacked New Florence. So it looks like we're actually going to see a Granada exile, which is really cool. I hope to see them get really strong. You do kind of love to see it. Granada Northeast, looking pretty strong. And as I said before, these New World colonies do not get these bonuses. They get colonial bonuses by default, so I figured they probably didn't need it. But people like New Providence and Granada, they get the bonuses because they are not colonial nations, even though their capital is in the New World. So you can see New Providence is getting these bonuses right now. Provincial Congo looking really good. And the Sahel is about to get split between Pope Man, Castile, Siena, and Florence by the looks of it. Meanwhile, Ragusa is getting full dibs on East Africa. The Ottomans in Portugal are splitting up China. I'm sure that's going to lead to conflict eventually. The hordes over here and Perm are definitely pushing over this way. If the Great Horde can get some of the riches of India, oof, they'll be a, they'll be absolutely strong. Meanwhile, Caraman has become Persia. Granada has moved its capital to Chesapeake in Virginia. So that's pretty good. We now have Granada in the New World. The New World is filling in quite quickly. I'm pretty happy with that. Borders in Europe are slowly going to change. I mean, considering that it's AI, they're still going to be focusing on internal wars. But obviously the ones with the capacity to do it are going to be doing some colonization. The Sahel was split, as we said. East Africa is all that's left over here to be colonized. But there's still a ton of India, Southeast Asia, Oceania, as well as China slash Japan 
that needs to get colonized. Gonna keep letting the game run, but the Ottomans are doing the best in the world economically next to Castile, Portugal, Venice, France, Muscovy, Austria, England, and then Granada. So things are starting to pick up here. Ottomans are very rich. With all the colonies going on in Africa and the New World, you're going to see quite a bit of trade steering into these areas. Granada's been cut off, but it doesn't look like that's stopping them. They are certainly pushing their way through these guys. Like I'd said before, Brittany, France, as well as Naples. And it looks like Granada is down here as well. But uh, don't count out heretical Central America. <laughs> Aragonese Mexico is going to make them a lot of money. Vinland is the hegemon up here in Canada. East Africa is going mostly to Provence, Ragusa, and then a couple people around the coast here. These guys over here have been going to war with each other amongst themselves. Doesn't look like anything major has happened from it, but they're definitely still doing it. The Great Horde is all the way down into Delhi, so I reckon that they're going to start getting very rich very soon. Portuguese Korea. Some would argue the most blessed Korea. Next to Ottoman Japan. All is as it should be. We have pirates over here in San Francisco. I don't see much different than the way it is in real life. This is what I'm talking about. Great Horde and No Guy just beating the tar out of each other. One type of video I've been thinking about, and I've had it suggested in my Discord, is every time an AI occupies another AI's province, the province is automatically ceded to them in court and just kind of see how things end up with that. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about that. I know another channel, I think it was like EU4 Time Lapse or something along those lines made a video on that a while back. And I thought it was really interesting. And that goes with anything. If you guys have any suggestions of things you'd like to see, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe because there's plenty of content coming out in the coming months that you are going to want to see. Portugal is now over here touching tips with no guy. I'm sure that there's going to be conflict once these guys start bordering each other over here. And I'm definitely excited to see kind of when it reaches its equilibrium. Also, it looks like Venice and Ottomans are splitting Japan. And Brittany is over here in Austria slash New Zealand. Granada hasn't really changed a whole lot. But uh, yeah, Genoese Louisiana is doing quite well. Because of the way that this game works, we now have a Norwegian Louisiana. And East Africa slowly filling in. Borders are consolidating down in South America. North America, things are starting to fill in too. We're almost there. India is filling in. Great Horde is looking quite good, as well as no guy. Perm is getting quite a bit of land over here. Cypriot Indonesia, as well as Cypriot Malaya. Very cool. Oh, and by the way, the uh, Reformation did spawn over here in Death Martian. I don't know if that's actually going to make literally any difference at all, but it did happen. Oh, how based is this? We have an Orthodox Volgast. I appreciate that. I don't know how it happened, but I approve. And checking in here on the economy, looks like Ottomans, Castile, Portugal, still top three. But Pope Man coming in strong as well as Caraman, France, Granada, Provence, Muscovy. Aragonese Mexico is actually three slots above Aragon. <laughs> provincial Congo has become Provincial Southern Africa. It appears that we are almost done. For some reason, things like this exist where there's a province here, but Castile has all six of their colonists over here, so I have to manually go in and tell them to do it. But yeah, aside from that, it's working pretty well. The New World is now completely colonized. Not a single uncolonized province in either continent, so that's exciting. We still have a couple of stragglers over here, but I feel pretty confident in saying that it's mostly just the AI derping. So if you guessed 1525, then you get a cookie. Go down to the comments and claim your cookie. And another big thing is I just kind of want to see how these countries interact because they have so many different borders with so many different people now. I'm curious how the AI will sort that out. Ah, yes. The Sunni United States under Mohammed Nasrid. Truly the most blessed version of the United States I could think of. This is a very halal United States, I would say. And the funny thing about Granada forming the United States is that it actually formed Florida first. But before I could hit the unpause button on my recording, they had already formed the United States, which uh, makes it even funnier in my opinion. Russia has formed and it keeps on going to war with Perm, but not really taking a whole lot of land. Commonwealth is very strong with 140,000 troops, but so is the Ottomans with over 200. Britain went Anglican and it looks like the HRE is a mixture of uh, reformed as well as Protestant. The League War is absolute weak sauce this time around, but the war is on nonetheless. Uh, obviously, the uh, Catholics are probably <laughs> gonna win this one. And here's the world religious map, a quick glance. Mostly Catholic, with a little bit of Sunni, a little bit of Orthodox sprinkled in over there for flavor. Definitely looks like the DEA went in hard on uh, Pablo this time around, and uh, didn't really show a whole lot of mercy. And just letting you know that Naples capital over here is on this Sakhalin 
island in Japan, which is pretty funny. Well, 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 what do we have here? It looks like the Ottomans were attacked by the Commonwealth and are getting absolutely clobbered. I'm curious what this means. I mean, what if they go bankrupt and they collapse to a bunch of people around them? That would be interesting. So it seems that New Spain has formed, which means that Aragon has been integrated by Spain. Genoese, Louisiana has been split between um, <laughs> the United States as well as Mexico, the Pirate Kingdom. And Genoa's capital is out here in Salt Lake City, Utah. France has pushed Brittany for the most part out of South America, as well as Naples. It seems that uh, Southern Africa is no longer Provence's winter home. They are now here full time with their capital here in Luba, Brittany, undisputed in Australia and New Zealand. And I think my favorite thing over here is uh, Karamanese Burma. Uzbek has migrated into northern China, as well as Great Horde has migrated into Khorasan. Karaman is now Persia, and the development map looks pretty cool. Northern Africa has been developed quite a bit, as many of these countries have moved their capitals over here. And even Western and Central Africa has got quite a bit of development going there as well. As does China, but you expect that at this point. Oh my. Well, how, uh, how fitting. And I'm sure that you guys have heard about the, uh, the Southern Indian nation of Cyprus, yeah? with, by the looks of it, a Polish dynasty. And the Ottomans are certainly not feeling very good at this point. They just got punched so hard in the mouth by Austria, only to get dogpiled on by Russia as well as the Great Horde. And it looks like the Commonwealth was trying to squish the revolution, but they messed around and found out, and now they're at war with Austria as well as Spain. And Austria is rocking almost a million men in the field, which is crazy. And to add insult to injury for the Ottomans, they are currently bankrupt as well as taking on more loans actively. So this may be the beginning of the end for the Ottomans. The death spiral is well underway. Oh, why'd you guys have to go and do it to them like that? The audacity of these men to create this crazy border gore. Look what they did to my boy. Now I don't quite know what's going on down here, but this French Brazil has 350,000 troops, whereas America over here only has 140. And also I noticed that America has Mexican culture, which makes it way funnier than it already was. America is currently at war with like a very large chunk of the world and it doesn't look so good for them. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I really do feel like I've seen this one before. Europe is looking pretty good, very prosperous. Lots of prosperity over, oh, oh my God. Oh my god. So, this doesn't say anything about my personal political beliefs, but it does appear that uh, Kosovo is indeed Serbia. It's just a joke, it's just a joke. I have no stance on it, I was just kidding. Don't, don't, please don't flog me in the comments. Here is the aftermath, mostly Denmark and the New World as well as Spain. Don't worry, we still have our Sunni Mexican United States. Though it looks like they have actually switched to the Great Republic. Very cool. France controls most of South America. And you can see they have absolutely destroyed the United States' territories down here. Africa remained extremely stable throughout the entire campaign. Europe looks, you know, about what you would expect it to, honestly. The revolution absolutely destroyed Europe as well as Central Asia. Perm is a subject of revolutionary Russia, but they hate them. So they've just been sitting there for a couple hundred years. I think one of the funnier things that I've seen is that the Ottomans were actually reduced to like modern Turkey borders for the most part. There was an independent Greece for a while, but the Knights ganged up on them and ate them up. Great power, Spain, no surprise in number one. Russia, number two is a pretty good one. And then the Pope man in number three. I think that that is awesome. Ottomans are still a great power though after losing like literally 15 wars. Economic hegemon is Spain and military hegemon is Russia. Looks like they are very comfortably over 1,000 regiments. India is now the Papal State. I think one of the more interesting colonial empires that I saw was Ragusa. You got Ragusan Horn of Africa, Ragusan Coromandel, Ragusan Malacas, cultures in the New World, lots of Mexican and Iberian cultures, a little bit of Italian, and then Norwegian, and then one Sami province up here, very important. More Italian, French, a lot of Italian in Northern and Central Africa. That's no surprise considering how close they were in the beginning. Tatar cultures spread into Northern India and the Reformation was squished out for the most part, though it doesn't look like they're gonna be passing any reforms anytime soon. 
Well, I do hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please make sure you let me know by leaving a like on the video. I do appreciate that sort of feedback. If you have some suggestions of things you'd like to see in the future, leave them in the comments below as well. On the screen right now is going to be a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you, the one watching this. So feel free to check that out after this one. If you haven't already subscribed, I definitely recommend you do that. Join my Discord, subreddit, Twitter. They're all linked in the description below as well as my Patreon. If you appreciate what I do and you want to pitch me a dollar or two, I appreciate that a lot. But until next time, stay chill.